Jaeger is the German word for hunter, and these typically short-barreled large caliber rifles were ideal for hunting in situations where ease of handling was important. The carved wooden trigger guard and double set trigger is also characteristic of the Jaeger. This example is very well made and lightly but expertly carved with engraved German silver furniture. The 60 caliber barrel is 23 inches long and at 7.5 pounds the rifle carries easily and points quickly. The characteristic stock is wide and broad and although not shown here the rifle is equipped with a sling. The lock on this Jaeger is round faced in the French style rather than the more usual flattened Germanic version. The maker J.G. Dachstein worked in Aix-la-Chapelle now known as Aachen which is on the German-Belgian border southeast of Liège. He was active toward the end of the 18th century and is known for his high quality and often complicated arms such as his waterproof inline flintlocks. This lock incorporates a sliding safety which is highlighted here. The safety was engaged with a hammer with a hat cock and it completely locked the mechanism. The pan is oval in the French manner and because this is a very high quality gun there is a gold line touch hole. Internally the lock is well finished and uses a typically long mainspring with a hooked end bearing on the tail of the tumbler. This style was used from the 17th century until superseded by the improved linked stirrup design by John Manton. When placed in the half cock position, the sliding safety can be engaged to lock the tumbler. Also referred to as a stocking safety, this was an important safety feature because it prevented the hammer from dropping if it was snagged on a branch while being carried. Here you can see the block which moves forward into a slot in the tumbler, locking it in place. The hammer can be neither pulled back or dropped at this point. When the pen is closed and the safety off, the lock can be fully cocked and then fired. Looking at the bottom of the gun, we can see the inlet engraved German silver reinforcement for the trigger guard. This was not seen on the more ordinary Jaegers. The typical double set trigger is arranged so that when the rear trigger is cocked, a light touch on the forward trigger, sometimes referred to as the hair, as in hair trigger, will fire the gun without jogging the aim. This gun is nicely but not elaborately decorated with engraved German silver furniture such as this side plate. The stock at the ramrod thimble is also nicely but not elaborately carved. The wrist of the stock behind the tang is carved and there is an inset cartouche with a royal coat of arms. The double-headed eagle holding an orb and sword is a device from the Holy Roman Empire and is similar to devices on coats of arms of principalities in Thuringia, but I have not been able to find out who owned this rifle. Since there were hundreds of minor principalities in the Germanic states at this time, not to mention even more noble houses with their coat of arms, finding a match would be difficult if the information still exists. It's a small patch or flint box inlet into the base of the stock, and the wide butt plate makes for comfortable shooting even with a heavy load. The rear sight has a folding leaf which provides 15 inches of elevation per 100 yards. If this rifle was sighted in at 100 yards, flipping up the sight leaf was zeroed at 150 yards with a hunting load. Now that we've looked it over, let's load it and see how it shoots. This Jaeger has a bore of 60 caliber and <clears throat> it loads a 58 caliber ball with a 20 thousandths patch. The riflings are relatively deep, although not as deep as uh, suggested by these uh, slightly inlet uh, uh, rifling starts. For the load, we're going to use 50 grains of 2F Swiss black powder. Uh, this is a trail walk load that keeps the targets intact. For hunting, you would probably double that to 100 grains. A 20 thousandths patch pre-lubricated goes under the ball 
and we start it with a short starter. It's relatively tight. The relatively stout iron ramrod suggests that the load for this was somewhat hard to get down in the original gun as it is here. It's now solidly seated on the load. Now it's ready for priming. To prime the rifle and ready it for firing, the lock is brought to half cock, at which point the sliding safety can be engaged, which now prevents the, any further movement, uh, movement of the lock. This is the way the rifle was traditionally carried. Uh, a few grains of black powder are now placed in the pan. The pan cover is closed and the rifle is now ready for firing. To fire the rifle, the cocking trigger is first pulled back and then when the front hair trigger is touched, it fires. For our first shot, let's try a standing offhand shot at a 50 yard target. Releasing the safety, cocking the trigger, full cock, Now let's collect some data by firing through an older chronograph to see what type of missile velocity we get at different loads. Next, let's try three shots off the bench with 50 grains of Swiss 2F powder to see what kind of a group we can get. Now for shot number two. And finally, shot number three. The three shots are well grouped, but about six and a half inches high. The small windage can be easily adjusted, but there is no provision for changing the elevation on this rifle. The shots may have been high because it was originally sighted in at a greater distance or perhaps a different sight picture is needed. I use the traditional sight picture where the front sight fills a notch in the rear sight, but the original owner might have used this sight picture where the tip of the front sight was just visible in the bottom of the notch, in which case the group would have been a good bit lower. In any case, all these rifles have a personality of their own and require a lot of practice to find the way they work best. I hope everyone who views this video has a keen appreciation for these rifles, which were the creations of incredibly skilled craftsmen working with nothing but hammers and files. I salute them.